Today it's um, Acts chapter 9, we're going to start in verse 10, and uh, she'll read down to 30. Consider uh, Saul of Tarsus once again. All right, thank you. through 30 and we, he with three days without sight and neither ate nor drank now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to him the Lord said in a vision Ananias Ananias and he said here I am Lord so the Lord said to him arise and go to the street called straight and inquire at the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tartus. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered the Lord, I have heard for many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you ca came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened, and then Saul spent some days with the disciple at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. If you don't mind, I'll read a little bit more. Let me read down to 25. Uh, we're at 21. It says, Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who call on his name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose, that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. And after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, their plot became known to Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. And then the disciples took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. Right, that's as far as I wanted to go, so let's pray. I bless your name, Heavenly Father, and thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for um, being willing to uh, stoop down to us, Lord, and, and speak to us uh, who are but dust and ashes, and you have made us... Uh, sons and daughters of God. You've called us into your kingdom. And uh, today we have this wonderful example of a man transformed. And uh, so we pray, dear God, that since we are of like flesh and blood as he was, uh, that uh, you would do a similar good work in each of our hearts, uh, cause us to see the purpose for which you have uh, called us into your eternal kingdom and glory. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right, uh, the, your, uh, the main uh, verse I'd like to have you uh, look at today is 15. Uh, the first thing I want to point out uh, is in that verse, uh, the, the words of the Lord Jesus about Saul, uh, where it says, this man is a chosen vessel of mine, uh, chosen to do something, right? Namely, what's he supposed to do? It says, to bear my name uh, before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Uh, I want you to remember last week what we said about Saul uh, by his own words, that Christ apprehended him, right? Christ laid hold of him, 
uh, arrested him in his path of evil doing and then appointed Saul to something completely opposite, right? A totally different uh, purpose for living. Uh, you see how Ananias hesitated to go, um, but these words of the Lord Jesus put an end to his qualms. I have chosen him, right? And that's really all Ananias needed to hear. You know, who am I to say anything? You know, if you've chosen him, who am I to, to say otherwise? Uh, and as we see from Saul's subsequent behavior uh, and the things that he'll write later on, uh, this sense of awe and wonder at being chosen by the Lord never left him. He forever is grateful. Uh, he never stopped praising and thanking the Lord uh, for laying hold of him, stopping him in his evil way, pouring out his grace on him uh, and pardoning his wickedness and then calling him to serve him. Okay, you, I have chosen you. Right, Ananias, I have chosen this man. And Saul immediately devoted the rest of his life to uh, the, the purpose that Jesus gave him. And I would think that every true Christian would at some times uh, in his life would, would be overtaken by this awesome sense that you've been chosen. What is this special privilege that I enjoy, that I've been uh, favored with, that I should know the Savior? that I should, I should have the pleasure of knowing the, the Son of God, and that he would uh, rescue me out of my uh, ignorance and futility, uh, my, my demeaning behavior, uh, my misdeeds, my words, my thoughts, right? That, that he would give me a place at his table. Uh, uh, he would give me a purpose to fulfill in, in his king. Like, why me? When there are so many out there who know nothing of all this. Uh, so many people who just go on in their, in their sorrow and in their anger and in their uh, restless churning desires and their uh, ignorance of God. And, and isn't it amazing? Well, here I am embraced by the King of Heaven. He has chosen, he's loved me. And I know it's not just random chance, you know, I know there's people who aren't saved, people who are saved, and I just sort of happen to fall into the category of the saved. It's not just statistics. He loved me. He saw me in the circumstances of my life, and he came to me, and he took me out of the mud when everything could have been completely different, right? And for so many people, it is completely different. But here I am. I'm counted among the saints. Uh, I am an object of his mercy. I mean, regardless of what you think about the concept of eternal predestination, uh, when you really think about how did I get here? How is it that I am uh, uh, held in the grip of the Lord Jesus? You know, what transpired in my life to bring me here? You can't possibly think of taking any credit for it. Jesus did this. I, mean, I owe it all to him. Right, God's grace to me, to me, was exceedingly abundant. His faithfulness and the love he shows in the Lord Jesus Christ was exceedingly abundant. And I don't know how this stuff happens. I don't know how God arranges events in your life. I don't, you know, the scripture or the, the hymn says, I know not how the spirit moves, convincing men of sin. I don't know why some people respond and other people don't. You know, why do, why do some people hear and receive and other people don't? I know this, though. I was blind, and now I see. I was lost, and now I'm found. Okay, Christ fixed his attention on me. Not, like, not just the world generally. I know God so loved the world, right? He loved the world generally. He knows me. He loves me. He gives me his Holy Spirit, and he, he makes me his, one of his. And wow, do you ever think that? I mean, does that, does that kind of thinking ever sort of flood over you just from time to time? Why me? Why should I be chosen for this privilege? Why should I uh, be special to him? Uh, usually it's the opposite. 
right? Usually people are like congratulating themselves about how special they are, you know, my smarts, uh, my goodness, my, uh, my skills, my wits, right? Whatever makes me special. I think a, a truly humbled, rescued, redeemed, transformed soul, I think at least sometimes, is going to echo uh, uh, some of these sentiments of the apostles that you find in the scriptures. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who in his overflowing mercy has begotten me again to a, a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Right? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Uh, uh, we know, brothers, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our, our gospel came to you not only in word, but in power, in the Holy Spirit, with full conviction. Right? We know he has chosen you. Oh, the depth of the wisdom and the knowledge uh, of, of God, right? How unsearchable his riches are and his ways past finding out, right? He has chosen me. He has chosen you. But to follow up, I want you to see another point, which is very important. Take notice from that verse, uh, 15 and, and, and 16, 15. When the Lord chooses, he chooses for a purpose. Okay, going back to verse 15, he is a chosen vessel of mine to do something, to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Right? I am appointing Saul a task, a uh, function, right? A, a purpose in my kingdom, namely to take the gospel out into the world, to bear my name. Uh, now, later on in the book of Acts, uh, Saul, when he's Paul, um, he'll be retelling this uh, incident um, to the crowd uh, in chapter 22, and he's going he's gonna to retell this actually twice more. Um, but there, over in chapter 22, he says, Ananias said to me, The God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will, to see the just one, and to hear the voice of his mouth, for you will be his witness to all men of what you've seen and heard. Okay, so you hear there's a, there's a purpose, there's a function. Uh, again, in chapter 26, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Get up, stand on your feet, because for this purpose I have appeared to you to appoint you a minister and a witness to things which you have seen and things which I will yet show you to open men's eyes to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God and so on. Okay? In other words, uh, Saul never just sat around and said, isn't it amazing that I've been chosen? He knows he's been chosen unto a purpose. Right? Christ appointed him to be his witness, right? to, to bear his name. Okay? So he now has a duty. He has a, a calling to fulfill. And friends, this is what you see everywhere in the Bible when the Bible talks about God's choosing. Or the other way, of course, that it's translated is his election. Okay? Election just means his, he's choosing. He made a choice. Okay? God doesn't just choose full stop. God chooses for something. Right? Christ laid hold of me for what, though? Okay, this man is my chosen instrument to bear my name before kings, Gentiles, and the children of Israel. So Saul will say, if I preach the gospel, I don't have anything to boast about because necessity has been laid on me. Right? In fact, he says, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Okay, I've been charged with a stewardship. Okay, so if I have a reward, my reward comes in doing it freely and, and, uh, and willingly. Uh, all right, now listen to Peter. This is 1 Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, his own special people, so that what? So that you may proclaim the praises of him who 
called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Okay, you also are chosen vessels. You have a function, right? You have a purpose to fulfill, and according to Peter, that's to proclaim the praises of God your Father and bring glory to God. Okay, so he says, I beg you, therefore, to abstain from fleshly desires which war against your soul. I beg you to have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles so that they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God on the day of visitation. Okay? You're chosen for a purpose. You must fulfill your purpose. When Ephesians talks about uh, God's election, it's also there for a purpose. Okay, here it is from Ephesians 1. He chose us in him that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's why he chose you with an objective, right? You have to fulfill your objective, right? We are his workmanship, it's chapter 2. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, so that's what we're chosen unto. So uh, we mustn't neglect it. James says, as James chapter 1, of his own will, God brought us forth by the word of truth. Whose will was it? It was God's. Right? Was it your will? No, it was God's will. You didn't do it. God did it. But why did he do it? Okay, of his own will, God brought us forth by the word of truth so that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved, let every one of you be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath because man's wrath does not produce the righteousness of God. And also, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and wickedness and receive meekly the implanted word which is able to save your souls and make sure that you are doers of the word not just hearers not just listeners that would be deceiving yourselves right because he's chosen you but you have to be obedient to his choosing right he chose you to do his will he chose you to bear his name he chose you to declare his praise okay again peter says uh, you were elect unto obedience. Okay, another version, the NIV, I think, it says uh, uh, you were chosen, right, according to God's foreknowledge through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. So, saints, it's important that you, you please don't think of your salvation as a kind of cosmic uh, get out of jail card to just sort of be produced on the day of judgment. Here, I have this. Okay? Don't dare tell yourself uh, that the grace of God means that obedience is no longer necessary in your life. Well, after all, Christ died because I'm disobedient and he died for my sins. You were chosen unto obedience. You were chosen for transformation, for doing the holy will of God. Okay? And on judgment day, it will be a matter of examination how and whether uh, you fulfill the calling for which you are a chosen vessel. Okay, why were you chosen? To be holy and blameless, to proclaim the praises of God, uh, to, to bring glory to him. Okay, and Peter says, you've lived enough of your life the sinful pagan way. You're living in, in lewdness and passions and, and idolatry now that you've been chosen, live the rest of your life for the will of God, right? Be done with sin. You know how Jesus said, not everybody who calls me Lord is going to enter the kingdom, but those who have done the will of my Father. Okay, that's what you're chosen for. So Peter says, make your calling and your election sure by giving all diligence to add to your faith virtue and add to your virtue knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness and love, right? Being diligent to do these things. Peter says, if you lack those things, 
you are um, short-sighted and blind. But if these things abound in you, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful uh, in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Right? It's what Jesus said to his disciples uh, on that last night. Right? You didn't choose me. I chose you. But for what? I chose you so that you would go and bear much fruit. Okay? Fruit that will last. Right? This requires, uh, according to Peter, requires diligence on our part. Right? You were called. You were chosen. Now, give all diligence to uh, fulfill your calling and, and your election. Uh, and and, and remain steadfast to the end. So let's look at Saul. What do you see as the result of Christ's mercy toward him? Uh, I would say that Saul's response is is a combination of joy and gratitude and diligence. Okay, he received his sight, he arose, he was baptized, he he joined the community of the believers there in Damascus, and uh, verse 20, says, uh, immediately he began to preach Christ in the, uh, in the synagogues that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's bold, he's courageous, uh, and he preaches with such effectiveness that before long the Jews who were after the Christians uh, think it's, they have to go after him now. Uh, but does that stop him? No. Okay, the Lord gave him a charge. You're going to be my witness. And, and as Saul himself later says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly calling. Okay, I was not disobedient. I went out and I declared uh, both to those of Damascus first and later on at Jerusalem and then all through Judea and even to the Gentiles that they needed to repent and turn to God and do deeds uh, uh, befitting of repentance. Okay, and that's why the Jews arrested me. So this is later on in the book. But I stand to this day testifying to the grace of God and the words of the prophets that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead and be the light of the world. Okay, I was not disobedient to the charge laid upon me. That's, that's so important, saints. You have a charge laid upon you, and you mustn't be disobedient to it. Okay? He was chosen, he was appointed, and for the rest of his life, he set about uh, fulfilling uh, that call, testifying to small and great alike the grace of God, Okay, so you see he's, he's full of joy, full of gratitude, um, but also diligence. Okay, the love of Christ compels us, he said. Uh, I forget about the things that are behind and I press on uh, to, to, to obtain that for which Christ laid hold of me. Okay, I must preach the gospel. I have to discharge uh, my stewardship. Uh, as it is written, right? I will, con- I will confess you among the Gentiles. I will sing to your name. Okay, by the grace of God, he chose me. He, he gave me a ministry to, to uh, preach to the Jews and to the Gentiles alike that they might be an acceptable offering to God and therefore I glory in Jesus Christ. Okay, this is, uh, what a transformation you see in, in Saul. Uh, one more thing that you s- ought to see here, and this is, um, again, 15 and 16, uh, that Saul was not chosen just to be Christ's witness. He was also chosen to suffer for his sake. Right? He was chosen to suffer for his sake. Uh, so verse 15, uh, the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my names before, uh, before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Because uh, taking the news of uh, a righteous and holy calling into an unrighteous and unholy world uh, is going to invite some opposition. It's going to provoke the wrath of some. Preaching repentance to people who love themselves is going to invite resistance. Right? Preaching a crucified Savior is going to bring some, uh, some ridicule. Uh, people have their own opinions. People have their traditions and their religions that they want to defend. Uh, people have different values and priorities from God's. I think we know that. Uh, people have their pride. People become jealous when somebody comes along and, and uh, um, uh, wins their constituents away. Right? So there's, there's, there's going to be suffering Along with, the, uh, along with the labor. But that can't hinder us, right? And we will learn it from Saul himself. Okay? 
we've been called, we've been chosen to a purpose to bring glory to God, declare the excellencies of Jesus, to, to spread the news of the forgiveness of sins, right, to people from a, a perverse generation, and to be holy as God is holy. And, and nothing can be permitted to turn us aside from, uh, from that. They're going to try, right? But we must just keep on keeping on, as we're going to see with, with Saul. Now, in Damascus, um, you see from the, the reading here, some people at first must have thought that he lost his mind. Um, or maybe I think they thought he was trying to trick them. He's faking being a, a believer. Right? Isn't this the man who arrests Christians? Isn't this the man that says destroys those? Does, doesn't he destroy Christians? What is he trying to do? Is this some kind of a, a trap? A trick? He's in earnest. He's in complete earnest. He has really changed. Right? It says that Saul uh, grew in strength uh, because he knew the scriptures. Okay? Of course, he got better and better at showing Christ in the Old Testament scriptures. Right? Most importantly of all, he's now seen the Lord Jesus uh, with his own eyes. Right? He's seen the risen Lord. This is, this is, the news is true. And this is the kind of man that you cannot uh, win an argument with. Right? It says he confounded all their arguments and, and their objections. Right? And pretty soon the Jews there in Damascus decide this man needs to be shut up. So it's, you know, the first stage is like amazement. Uh, the second stage then is arguing, and then the third stage is violence. Okay, but verse 22 says that Saul increased all the more in strength. Right, he confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus is the Messiah. 23 says, after many days passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. Uh, verse 24 at the end says they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Right, they're going to ambush him next time he goes out of the gate. Uh, but it says their plot became known to Saul, and the disciples took him by night, and uh, they let him down through the wall in a basket. Right? He escaped out of their hands, uh, going down in the big basket. So, uh, you know, no use shaking your head and wondering, you know, why are people like this? Well, you used to be like this, Saul. Right? You know very well why people are like this, because they're blind, they're ignorant, their hearts are hard. Right? You yourself once had a hard heart but Christ in his mercy got a hold of you. That's your testimony, right? So don't hate your enemies. Don't go out there and, well, I know they're out there laying in ambush, so we're gonna go ambush them and kill them. No, no, just get away from them, go on to another place, and you just keep on testifying everywhere that Jesus is the Christ. And in all your successes, uh, God is gonna be glorified, and, and even in all your sufferings, He'll be there to hold you up, give you endurance. Okay? In fact, his strength will be manifested even in your weakness. Right? You're going to be put through the ringer. You're going to be put through a lot. But I have raised you up just for this purpose that my glory might be uh, displayed in you. Uh, this is, uh, we just have a, a little quick summary here in these few verses, but this is just the bare beginnings of things for Saul. He has very much uh, yet in front of him to endure, uh, to suffer before someday. You know, the, the, the famous words that he wrote about, uh, I fought the good fight, you know, I've run my course. Uh, we're just starting the course, right? You have a long course ahead of you, but the Lord laid hold of me. He set me on this course. And, you know, much later in life, you'll be able to say, I finished. I just want to ask saints, do you feel that the Lord has laid hold of you? If so, don't miss the importance of asking, for what has he laid hold of me? For what? Right? And I think some of us here have some work to do uh, in that regard. Right? We, we say we believe that Jesus died for us, but we have not yet asked, well, what now? What did he save me for? Well, the Bible tells you. It tells you you have to cooperate with him. Okay? Now, you're not going to be the apostle to the Gentiles. There's only one of those necessary. But uh, you are told in the scriptures what you've been chosen to do. Okay? What's your purpose? Read these passages in the Bible that are about election and about choosing. 
You're chosen to bear the name of Jesus Christ. You're chosen to be holy and blameless. You're chosen for obedience to Jesus. Uh, you're chosen for being transformed. You're chosen to praise his name uh, among the lost. Uh, you're chosen to endure tests and sufferings and even opposition for the name of Jesus. Okay, that too. You're a, a chosen vessel by which God will prove the truth of the saying, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. That's why you're chosen. I've chosen you that you should go and bear much fruit, fruit that will last. In Saul, we have a brilliant example. If you've been saved, be joyful, be grateful, be diligent. Diligent to make your calling and election sure. And in case you're wondering whether Christ has even chosen you at all, don't you want to be chosen? Does this sound good to you? Yes. To, to receive a pardon for all your misdeeds and sins. To, to bear the name of Jesus Christ. To be his child. To be his light in the world. To, uh, to proclaim his praises, to bring other people out of darkness and into, uh, into the kingdom of God, out from under the power of the devil, to, to be holy. Doesn't that sound good? Yes. Even to bear reproach for the name of Jesus Christ and, and have him uphold you in all of your tests and trials. To me, nothing sounds better than that. Well, answer the call is all I can tell you. Right? Do you want to be chosen? Answer the call then. His kingdom is coming. He calls you into it. He says, no one who ever comes to me will I ever cast away. Jesus calls us over the tumult of life's wild and restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us. By thy mercy, Savior, may we hear thy call and give our hearts to thine obedience and serve and love thee best of all. Just answer the call then, and you will know that you've been chosen. It will be true of you what the scripture says. We know, brothers beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not just in words, but in the power of God and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. With that, let's pray. Uh, gracious Father, I praise your name, Lord God, that you have laid your hand upon us, upon me, and that you have stopped me from, a, from going astray. Um, from, from being lost, from being out in the world not knowing you as so many others just don't know you. And I know, Lord, it's not that you don't love them, but you did love me. You loved us. And you've called us to be your vessels. Fill us up then, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. That same spirit of of love and compassion, holiness and righteousness uh, that, that, that proceeds, Lord, from your own heart and cause us to be your witnesses here uh, to those who are still lost. Please, Lord God, magnify your name in our strength. May your name be praised in our weakness. May you be our strength. Thank you, Father, for the family of God. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the promise of resurrection and eternal life. And Lord Jesus, I just bless you that you are always, always with us day by day. May we follow you and may we rejoice in, uh, in being the sheep of the Good Shepherd. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love each other. Uh, may it be more true of us each and every day until you return in glory. In Christ we pray, amen.